Hi, I'm Katie from the Educational Psychology Service in Rochdale. Myself and my colleague Helen have been recording a series of videos all about play and resilience, and this is part three of that series. Uh, part one and two are also available if you haven't watched them previously and you want to, or if you want to go back and watch them again, uh, please feel free to do so. Just a reminder that Rochdale Borough Council are working with lots of other organisations to keep residents safe. There's information about services and support and the uh, information is all available on that web address that you can see on the screen. We're going to start this week again with another quote about play that we like. Playing is what children and young people do when they follow their own ideas in their own way and for their own reasons. So we've talked about before about how important play is um, and all the reasons why play is really important and it's important to let children follow their own lead um, in play. So what we're going to talk about today is a rich play environment. We've already talked about um, being a play partner and encouraging children and giving them opportunities to use loose parts play and today we're going to focus on what a rich play environment is and how you can provide that for the children you care for. So a rich play environment is one that's going to provide um, children with lots of different opportunities, as you can see there, but also it's a, an environment in which children feel comfortable to explore and confident to um, play in their own way on their own terms. We have previously talked about being non-judgmental about um, children's play choices and that, that continues to be important. So it's about um, you being there for help, but also being there to join in their fun um, as and when they invite you to do so. Uh, it's worth us just mentioning that we recognise that children in care may not have uh, had consistent opportunities to experience a rich play environment and they also might have had a, quite a variety of adult responses um, previously. So it's likely that for some children in care they're going to need more support when they're trying new things and um, they might not be as confident uh, to do things that are a, a little bit different. Um, they might need you to provide a little bit more guidance and structure at the beginning when they first start trying uh, new experiences. So a rich play environment will give children opportunities to try out different identities, to experience challenge and uncertainty, to experience a, a really wide range of different feelings um, and give them lots of opportunities for things like interaction so they can choose to play on their own or with friends um, or with the support of an adult. So we're going to talk about uh, five different types of play and this is um, taken from a developmental and cognitive psychologist called David Whitebread um, and he's done lots of research on play and he's looked at five types of play. Um, there's different research that looks at different types of play and of course children might um, choose different types of play uh, more or less at different developmental stages but we feel like this gives us a good framework to talk to you about the different types of play um, that there are and different play ideas so that we can make sure that we're providing a rich play environment for children and giving them lots of different opportunities to develop their skills. So the first one we're going to talk about is physical play. Physical play is really important for all of us um, um, it's especially important at the moment. Um, we know that physical play is not just helpful for physical health, but it's also really important for mental health. And that's again, gonna be very important um, with the current situation. So physical play develops things like whole body skills and um, things like rough and tumble play can support the development of emotional and social skills. So things like um, understanding um, children's uh, emotional expressions, learning when people say enough is enough and what they mean. Um, it also helps children to learn to identify risks and identify risks safely. So it gives children opportunity to develop their independence, um, their self-regulation skills. Uh, there's probably lots of different physical play ideas that you're already using at home or that you've got that you'd like to try, but we've put a few there as well. Um, things like uh, making obstacle courses, playing balloon tennis, um, doing things like walking bingo there's loads of different ideas for getting children active um, it's probably important to know as well that um, there is some research that shows that children actually get most of their physical play or more physical play um, from uh, unstructured play and that's one of the best ways that children can um, develop active play skills and they tend to get more um, physical exercise through play than they do necessarily structured sports activities. So even though those are important, there's lots of um, opportunities for children to develop active play outside of those sporting um, sessions. And that's in, uh, particularly important at the moment where those sessions won't be taking place in the same way. 
The second type is play with objects, and this is related to the development of thinking skills, things like reasoning skills and problem solving. Um, this allows children to kind of set goals and challenges and then monitor their progress towards them and reflect and adjust strategies. Um, Play with objects has been associated with um, developing things like perseverance skills and a positive attitude towards challenge, which is really important. And they can also help with self-regulation. So play with objects um, can include things like uh, Lego, den building, um, kind of junk modelling, creative things like using Play-Doh or slime or clay. Um, and it's Im important um, for us to recognise that, um, you know, children can use them in different ways at different times. Um, at different ages and stages, but play with objects is an important part of play. Next one, symbolic play. Um, this means uh, like pretending an object is something else or recognising that a symbol represents something, it means something. So things like musical notes, maps, math symbols, um, things like language play, music play, drawing, mark making. So there's loads of different opportunities uh, for children of all ages to engage in symbolic play. Um, things like making music can be really good and for older children they might like to use um, something more like an app or the laptop to do that um, or it might be through using instruments you've already got or making musical instruments. Um, things like creating a map of your local area could be done through um, children using photography. So lots of opportunities for developing symbolic play. Tend play um, is a really good way of developing children's reasoning skills. Um, it may have some impact on the development of children's social skills and it also appears to support things like the development of language and emotional regulation. Um, it, people kind of often think that pretend play is just for very young children but actually pretend play uh, plays an important role and it's something that you can do with older children. So things like dressing up could be more things like a fashion show or it could be kind of planning things like Halloween costumes, um, could be hair and makeup, um, Things like um, small world play doesn't have to also involve like loads of expensive um, toys. You could make things um, and you could uh, use loose parts play to represent things in small world play. And things like kind of drawing maps for cars on paper or using masking tape um, to develop kind of roads or towns or whatever you like really um, is good and very temporary and can be changed very easily from a day to day basis. Older children might also want to do things like create videos and animations using maybe Lego figures or small world figures. So there's lots of scope for pretend play and it's not just for younger children. And then finally, games with rules, things like board games, card games, but also maybe getting children to create new games or adapting games they already know. Um, we know that games with rules are really good for developing social skills related to things like sharing and turn taking and understanding other people's perspectives. So what would we like you to have a go at this week? Well, um, we think it's important to kind of keep on doing some of the things we've already talked about, like trying to be a play partner, but also giving children opportunities to use loose parts play. But also we think um, having thought about the different types of play, opportunities just to observe um, and think about the type of play that the children that you're um, caring for tend to choose. So do they uh, engage in all the types of play we've thought about or do they tend to choose one particular type of play? Um, do you think they'd enjoy any of the ideas that we've talked about this week? Um, do you think they'd like using materials in a different way? And um, just to think about what type of play you enjoy and the children in your home enjoy. Most importantly, um, of course, is to have fun and enjoy it. If you've got any queries or questions about this week's topic, please contact us. Our email address is there. It's available for you. Please contact us with any feedback. Um, let us know if things have been helpful. Um, let us know how, what types of play your child's chosen. And then finally, just a safeguarding reminder, there's um, useful contacts on the screen if you do have any concerns. Uh, we're hoping to upload weekly, so um, hopefully there should be part four available for you next week. Um, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much for watching. Um, take care, have fun and play.